Hey, what is up here, Rose? As you know, with no main Pokemon series game coming out this year, I've been playing a lot of ROM hacks and fan games. Some good, some bad. Here today, I am here to share with you my personal top 5 ROM hacks slash fan games I have played this year. Before we get started, I should say a lot of these on the list are incomplete, but are being worked on, so keep that in mind. Also, if you wish to play any of these games shown today, there will be a link in the description below to the forum where you can download it. With that said, let's hop into this list. At number 5, I have Pokemon Mega Power. Now if you played Victory Fight or Resolute, you will feel right at home playing this ROM hack, as it's from the same creator and features characters from the previous games. It features Pokemon from all generations, some great custom sprites and a pretty awesome story. The ROM hack goes up to the Champion of the Elite 4 and we are currently waiting for the post game to be finished. The post game sounds like it's going to be pretty awesome from what we've seen in the story, I won't spoil too much, but I will say if you played the Delta episode from Pokemon Alpha Sapphire or Mega Ruby, it might be a little similar to that. So. That's uh, pretty awesome, can't wait for that to come out. So, for the main story, without spoiling too much, you play as a professor that wants to make the strongest Pokemon but needed funds, which you get from a businessman who turns out to be The only downsides I can say about this hack is just like the last two hacks this guy has created, the English in it is horrendous, it is so bad. But it's not as bad as the previous games for this one, which is kind of good, but there's going to be some points where you're like, wait, that doesn't make any sense. It's totally understandable because the creator's probably not English isn't probably his first language, so it's fine, but it's still kind of hard to get through at some points. But after a while, you kind of get used to it, and you just kind of just play through the game, and it's still still kind of fun. All in all, Pokemon Mega Power is a very fun ROM hack, has a great story, has some Mega Evolution, and I cannot wait for this game to be completed. Also, a side note, I did an LP on this game. You should check it out. At number 4, I have a fan game that took me by surprise, Pokemon Legends of the Arena. This fan game was suggested to me for a series, and after episode 1, I knew this game was going to be good. Firstly, the story is pretty awesome. Unlike traditional Pokemon games where you beat 8 gym leaders, get badges, beat the Elite Four, yada yada yada, Legends of the Arena has you enter the World Championships. You have to go through 8 qualifiers to make it to the Championship Cup, which is really awesome, as you're not battling gym leaders, but you're av just average trainers like yourself who wants a shot to become the champion. It's pretty cool in that sense, you make some friends that way and you kind of see some recurring characters, it's, it's pretty awesome. One thing I absolutely love about this game is the dialogue. It is so well written, every time I play it, I was in tears. This game has a good sense of humor without ruining the feel of the main story, if that, if that makes sense. One thing I didn't like about it is the level gaps between areas. This isn't a huge problem, and more likely my fault, as this is a fan game that doesn't have a speed up button, and grinding felt so tedious, I just didn't want to do it. So overall, Legend of the Arena is a very fun fan game, I highly re recommend it. It goes up to the 6th medal, I guess you could say. Quite a lot of content in there, um, I think the next update is going to be about 6-8 to eight months, the end of the demo set, which is really upsetting because this fan game was super fun to play and I really want to play some more. At number 3, we have Pokemon Ethereal Gates. This is a fan game with lots of Fakemon, and this game is absolutely stunning. Great visuals, gorgeous soundtrack. I fell in love with this game. Usually when you play a hack or fan game with Fakemon, they aren't that great, but Ethereal Gates did a really good job with its Pokemon. I mean, look at these starters. They look incredible. So good. The only bad things I can say about this fan game is the screen size. When I played it, I'm not sure if they fixed it or not, but the screen size was super small, and I had to play it off my recording software. Just as uh, just because the screen was uh, blown up and I could see more than I can actually see on the uh, the game screen, so hopefully that's fixed. And the second thing is the second gym leader was really tough. Not really a bad thing, but I struggled with him. It was it was really hard. I don't know if anyone else did. It was just my Pokemon because I was just getting anything that looked cool, and the gym leader was actually pretty difficult. Unfortunately, the fan game only goes up to the second gym though. But there is a bunch of content in this demo, and you really get a feel of what this game will become. That is why I have Ethereal Gates at number 3 and I eagerly await the next update. Please bring it soon. At number 2, I have Pokemon Gaia. The main reason I love Gaia is the story is really solid. It features a variety of Pokemon from different generations and the pacing for this game is just great. While playing, I never felt bored in the slightest. I felt there was always something right around the corner. And with doing a little exploring in caves and stuff, you can find some pretty swell items and even Pokemon. There's nothing bad I can really say about this game. The only one thing that pops in my mind is that I have to start again to play the recent update, which isn't anything bad to be honest. This game is so good, it is worth a replay. But don't just take my word for it, check out this tweet from Titar. Before we get into number one, let's look at some honourable mentions. So, first one is Pokemon Life. This is currently in its alpha and the only reason it's not on the main list is because it's 45 minutes long. 
From what we get to play, this hack is amazing. Visually stunning, great story so far. It's really unique in the sense that it feels like a classic RPG with save crystals and if you lose a battle, you restart from your last save point. I really love this hack so much and I can tell you now, if this is finished next year or gets a longer demo, it is more than likely going to be number one next year because it was so good to play. Them 45 minutes were probably some of the best 45 minutes of a ROM hack I have played in a very, very long time. Another honourable mention is Pokemon Cyan. This is a ROM hack with Fakimon that actually looks quite cool. The story is pretty good. The whole situation with the gym leaders uh, not being in their gyms is pretty silly. It's like 6 out of 7 gym leaders in the demo aren't actually in their gyms, which is kind of annoying, but it kind of adds to humour, I guess. But aside from that, I had a lot of fun with this ROM hack and definitely worth a play with up to 7 badges to obtain. Quite a lot of content here and the Fakimon uh, look pretty awesome. Last honourable mention is Pokemon Ash Grey. This ROM hack is pretty old but it's received some pretty awesome updates this year, and all I'll say is, Pokemon 2000, Lugia, go play Ash Grey. Okay, so my number one hack fan game of 2015 is, Pokemon Insurgents. Okay, so where to begin? Firstly, this game has a killer story, so much is happening, not to spoil too much, but by the third gym, you're battling a Mega Rayquaza. It's pretty awesome, and by the fourth or fifth gym, a dude gets fused with Deoxy's DNA and some pretty intense stuff happens. The story of this game is really interesting and that alone makes this a really good fan game. Just the story, just basing it on the story, I say play this fan game, it is so good. But it has a really well written uh, story and a great soundtrack, it has some great features like Delta Pokemon which are like your normal Pokemon, but different designs and types. For example my Delta Charizard is a Charizard but it's not fire and flying type, it's ghost and dragon. And it looks, it looks insane, and when it Mega Evolves, it just looks so good. Uh, this game has Mega Evolution, and it even has its own Megas, like Mega Flygon, and my personal favorite, Mega Zorark. Thank you for making my dream a reality. Mega Zorark, please, Game Freak, make this happen in real life, you know. I've got some ideas if you want a Mega Zorark. It can actually work, just, you know, Game Freak, let me have it. It even adds some cool things like armor. Remember Mewtwo from the anime with the armor on, like Giovanni's Mewtwo? Imagine getting that for some of your Pokemon in this game. I had one for my Flygon, it looks so cool. There's plenty of content to play right now for this game, and my only hope is they bring out another update by the end of the year, because this by far is the best fan game out this year. Alright guys, that is my top 5 ROM hack slash fan games of 2015, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have your own top 5 for any Pokemon ROM hack slash hacks, leave them in the comments below because I would love to hear what you guys think. And remember, if you want to play any of these games, links are in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Peace.